If you're studying for the FAA Part 107 exam, let me tell you this, I can almost guarantee you, you'll get some weather-related questions on the test. The good news, these are some of the easier ones to get right, so knowing them will really put you in a great position to pass. We went ahead and pulled some questions from the Part 107 study guide and other trusted online resources to make sure you're fully prepared. And if you're looking for even more prep, we've got other videos covering key areas of the test. Be sure to check those out. All right, now let's get into it. Here are 10 essential weather-related questions to help you ace your Part 107 exam. Question number one, which weather report provides real-time observations? Is it a TAF, a METAR, or SIGMET? The correct answer is METAR. METARs give hourly weather updates with real-time data on wind, visibility, temperature, and precipitation. This makes them the go-to for immediate pre-flight planning. And since I was always confusing TAF and METAR, I wanted to just quickly go over a good way to remember the difference between the two reports. TAF stands for Terminal Aerodrome Forecast, and I think the only word you really need to remember from that is the F for forecast. So TAF gives you a look into the future. What is the weather going to be like over the next 24 to 30 hours? METAR, on the other hand, is all about the R, real-time conditions. It's what the weather is like right now. So just try to remember that TAF is for forecasting weather conditions, where METAR is for understanding weather conditions in real time. All right, so now that we know that, our question makes a lot of sense. We see that the question is asking about conditions in real time. We know that's going to be METAR and not TAF. And just to rule out SIGMET as well, SIGMET focuses on hazardous weather conditions like turbulence or thunderstorms, and it doesn't provide detailed real-time data. All right, question number two. What is the minimum visibility required for drone operations under Part 107? I know, we've covered this in some of our other videos, and I'm sure you've stumbled upon this question in other test prep videos, but it's one of the most common questions on the FAA Part 107 exam, so it's really important to know it, and we're just going to reinforce it here. The correct answer is B, three miles. So the FAA requires at least three miles of visibility to ensure pilots can maintain line of sight and avoid hazards like low-flying manned aircraft. Question number three. A sudden change in wind speed and direction is called A, wind shear, B, gust front, or C, microburst. The correct answer is A, wind shear. So wind shear refers to rapid changes in wind speed or direction, which can destabilize your drone and make it difficult to control. A gust, on the other hand, is caused by thunderstorm outflows, but it isn't always connected to sudden directional changes. And microbursts are localized downdrafts, a specific type of wind shear, but they're not the broad term used in this context. Question four, what cloud type signals thunderstorms and severe turbulence? Is it A, stratus, B, cirrus, or C, cumulonimbus? The correct answer is C, cumulonimbus. Cumulonimbus clouds are tall, dense clouds, often associated with thunderstorms, lightning, and turbulence, and of course, you don't want to be flying your drone near them. Stratus clouds, on the other hand, are flat and generally signal overcast but stable weather. And cirrus clouds are thin and high in the sky and they usually indicate fair weather. Question five, which condition is the most dangerous for drone flight? Is it A, light rain, B, freezing rain, or C, drizzle? I told you these were easy, right? I mean, light rain and drizzle seem like the same thing, so there's only really one that sticks out here, and it's freezing rain. Freezing rain coats the surfaces of your drone with ice, and that can affect the drone sensors or the propellers and just the overall stability of the drone. Question number six, what type of front often brings thunderstorms and gusty winds? Is it A, a cold front, B, a warm front, or C, a stationary front? And the correct answer is A, a cold front. And the reason for that is that cold fronts force warm, moist air upward quickly, creating unstable conditions that can lead to thunderstorms. Warm fronts, on the other hand, typically bring steady rain or drizzle, and stationary fronts can lead to prolonged rain, but they don't really have the turbulence of cold fronts. Question number seven, how does high humidity affect drone performance? Does it reduce lift, increase lift, or have no effect? The correct answer is A, reduces lift. 
So high humidity lowers the air density, which in return reduces the efficiency of your propellers and it decreases the stability. Increased lift happens in cooler, denser air, not humid conditions. And it's not C because we know that humidity always affects air density to some degree. Question number eight, which tool provides a forecast specifically for aviation conditions? Is it A, METAR, B, TAF, C, PIREP? So remember earlier in the video when we said that METAR, what, what letter was important to remember from there? R for real time. And under TAF, the important letter to remember was F for forecast. And so this question is asking which tool provides a forecast specifically for aviation conditions. That's going to be B, TAF. So TAFs, again, just to repeat, are concise weather forecasts specifically tailored for aviation, and they typically cover conditions within five miles of an airport. PIREPs, on the other hand, are pilot reports of observed conditions, and they're not predictive tools. Question number nine, what is a temperature inversion? Is it A, cold air trapped near the surface under warmer air, B, warm air trapped near the surface under cooler air, or C, a rapid drop in temperature with altitude? The correct answer is A. It's cold air trapped near the surface under warmer air. So inversions can create stable layers of air but can trap pollutants and reduce visibility near the surface. So oftentimes if there is an inversion, it may not be ideal conditions to fly a drone. It's not B because warm air at the surface under cooler air is just kind of normal, right? As we get higher in altitude, the air usually gets cooler. So that's not an inversion, that's just normal. And it's not C because yeah, temperature normally drops with altitude. Inversions are the exception. Question number 10, which weather condition is most hazardous for drones? A, fog, B, crosswinds, C, thunderstorms. And maybe there should be D, all of the above, because I don't think any of these are great for flying a drone, but one of them is definitely worse than the others, and that is C, thunderstorms. Thunderstorms combine wind shear, lightning, and turbulence, making them extremely hazardous for drone flights. Just don't fly your drone in a thunderstorm, even if it would look really cool, it's a bad idea. Again, I know a lot of these are obvious, but they are questions that are gonna come up on your exam. And if you have some familiarity with them, it's just gonna help you out and make you feel more relaxed while you're taking the exam. So it's always good to go over them just in case. Thanks so much for watching. I hope these 10 weather related questions and explanations help you feel confident heading into the FAA Part 107 exam. If you have any questions or need more prep, leave a comment below. And also be sure to like, subscribe for more study tips and drone advice. Good luck and happy flying.